just about resurrected. But I did have one thing to me that was really funny. I mean, it's just blatantly, honestly, truth. You break so much stuff doing this. Like, for example, there's a transmission right there. You see that guy? Yep, that's a transmission. And you see this guy right here? Yep, that's another transmission. And then there's another one in here that is operational now. We're about to fire it up, fill it up, put the blood in it. It doesn't even matter because right there is a red one right there in a red truck. And they're swapping that one. Way over there. There's another transmission. And they're changing it. I don't care if that damn thing makes 300 horsepower, 3,000 horsepower. If it's a Dodge diesel, it needs a damn transmission. Okay, welcome back to the channel. This is, uh, this is going to be a video about what happened at UCC and what you see behind us and what we're going to do about it. So it was a long, hard battle, but we did live, we did survive, we did good with what we had. And now it's the recuperation time. It's the time where you come back, you get back to be a profitable company, you fix all your mistakes and learn from it, talk about it and see what you can do to make it better. So I'm gonna set y'all up and we're gonna tear these things down. Like this one died on the dyno. We'll talk about how he died. This one died first pass of drag racing. Definitely my fault, we'll talk about that. And then this one right here, was a mistake of workmanship. It's not that the product failed, but this is the sled full transmission. This one's incredibly disappointing, and we'll talk about what we're gonna do to make that better, so it won't happen again. So stay tuned. If you like it, let me know. If you hate it, I don't really care. So um, yeah, I'm gonna set y'all up. We're gonna tear a few of these things down. found something had trouble getting the pump out little little washer there's cooked down pretty good oh that looks good oh yeah now this is probably gonna be the one called it freaking called it <laughs> We've been here before, Chris. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I, I swear, I think there's something, there's got to be something really special about us. I don't know what it is, but there's something really, really special about us that we're all so stupid. We keep doing the same things over and over to our vehicles. There's something wrong. These are definitely welded together. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to get the hammer out. We're probably going to stop there for a little while because I don't see the point in taking this apart. We all know what happened. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Should we switch to the other transmission now? All right, let's do it. This is victim number three. Dino. Dino. We all know what dino means. This shift linkage is a new pro part, like product thing I'm trying to work on, where you have a full manual valve body shifter, 
and you use an OEM bracket and you just weld two little washers on the side and you stick your little rod through there and then you come down here and you adjust that so that all that stuff goes back and forth like it's supposed to. But I'm gonna take all that crap off, but that's basically how it works. And we don't know if that's gonna work yet, but that is definitely the reason. A shift lever adjustment is why we lost the sled pull, which is why we lost UCC 2024, in my opinion. Pretty much had that sled pull figured out. We did win last year. It was the same thing, except the dirt was better this year. And I learned a lot about forward length. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's go take this thing apart. in there like that. Make that something. Stick it up in there like that. All that crap's off. That guy's out. Stand it up. No, no, it's bleeding. Oh my God. Look at it. Do a lot of that around here. <laughs> acceptable for a dyno transmission that's acceptable. I think the only thing we're going to find in this thing is a burnt torque converter. Kind of give her a good little shilly shake, a little push, and a little shilly shake. Sometimes she comes out, sometimes she doesn't. Then you got to get your ghetto pair of pliers here and you got to give her a little, a little twist, twist, and a little pull, pull. We're going to get a bigger pair of pliers. There we go. Hey, look. Just gotta give it a little shilly shake, that's all. Yeah, I'll show you this too. She looks real good. She looks real good. Like, oh my. Oh yeah, yeah. We're taking apart a good transmission. Now we can flip it down. I mean, having cool tools is like half the reason to be a mechanic. Man, these are too tight. It won't come apart. But she always does. Excellent transmission. We took apart an excellent transmission. Okay, I got you back on here and we'll talk about all these transmissions. First, we'll start with the transmission that we showed up with, and that was drag race training number one. Now, I'm, I'm probably going to lose count of all this crap because we had it out a whole bunch, but here's what we got. And this was my fault. I got a little too greedy in second gear with the nitrous kits. We had been taking off in Texas pretty good. Grabbed two kits in second, locked, smooth sailing, but it was hot and humid. Nitrous reacted really good, but the air was garbage. So then we went up to Indy. We did the same thing in perfect air. And then it kicked the tire, so I throttled it and got back in it and chipped third. It felt okay, so I grabbed overdrive and it was just kind of a junky run, but it, it was completed and it was like 6-0 something, I don't know. Pulled down the whole dang racetrack, didn't even know it. But the rest of the training worked out really good. And it did do like a 1-4-0-60 foot or something. It did something pretty good. 
completely smoked out second gear. All right, she gone. So then we put a transmission in it, which was this one. And then we broke the torque converter, or I broke the torque converter in a new thing I was doing. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really know about this that much. I knew it was a thing, but I didn't realize how fast it happened. But um, the torque converter was gone, so we didn't have lockup for the three other drag passes, and the fastest one being a 550. I don't even remember how fast, but it was a 550. And that's where we left off on drag racing, just flat out, didn't get enough passes, kind of didn't really know I had the lockup problem. I knew that it was staying high RPM, but at the starting line on one of the last races, or last attempts, it wouldn't die in second gear, shifted second, full manual valve body, locked torque converter, it didn't stall it out. So I was like, well, we gotta send this thing anyways. So that was that training, just a dead converter. And then we went to dyno on this transmission. That's what it was. We pulled it, changed converter, swap pump, some crap like that, put it back in, and we went to the dyno challenge. And then we uh, had another defective torque converter. It was crazy, but it was a used converter that I had about 12 passes on from down here in Texas. We didn't anticipate having this many problems, and so I didn't bring that many converters. Plus I had one drop ship to the track and then it didn't show up and all that fun stuff. So we dynoed with no torque converter lockup, like the craziest thing ever, but that's that's where we're at. That's what we got to work with. It would, it would lock at first, but then it would obviously just slip it. So you can lock at like lightweight RPM and lightweight power, and then as soon as you make big power, it slips. So they're already shipped off, like they were ballooned big time. They're already, they're already out, you know. We're, we're in here focusing on transmissions now. So I'll show you what this guy looked like. Pretty damn good to me. We'll take that. We will definitely take that. It's impressive that it survives. So after the dyno challenge, the converter was smoked and rattling and all this crap. And, and then we immediately, we had like two hours to swap to full sled pull trim from dyno challenge. I think we dynoed at like 12.30 or something like that. And then uh, I think uh, it's like 3.30 was the goal to start sled pull or something. So then we swapped it again. And then that didn't work out too well for me. This is the input shaft here. And this is the intermediate shaft. There's only one clutch in between here and that's the forward clutch or the input clutch. And it's welded together. Like, she, she broke, broke. now one in holy matrimony and the reason that happened um, you have all these custom brackets and stuff and we swap the transmissions and there's a lot of adjustments in these brackets and it just flat out did not get adjusted close enough and I was forewarned hey you know we need to adjust it but we had like 10 minutes to make it to tech and so I just didn't prioritize it high enough and we never made the shift link lever adjustment so it was halfway in neutral and halfway in gear so there's no telling what the line pressure really was. It was probably like 50 PSI or some crap. Of course, as soon as I get her all wound up and all the turbos, you know, start coming up to air pressure, it just slipped right through the trans. And it was like, the data log showed eight miles an hour on wheel speed and like 6,000 RPM. No, that's not how that works. So that, that right there let us down. That's a workmanship problem. That's not a product or component problem. That's a workmanship thing. That's where you have to have a team and you, review things and I mean I should have I should have barked that order louder but there's a lot going on at these things it's crazy so I'll show you what it looked like even though one of them is completely smoked pretty good at breaking shit I'll admit so myself but it's part of how this game goes you gotta be willing to break some eggs to make an omelet right that's what the whole saying goes you can't beat yourself up over mistakes like this that cost you a win and a big, huge challenge. It's been, I mean, years we've been chasing this thing. So it is what it is. All we got to do is learn from it, implement some changes and make it better and go back out and try again. I'm not saying I'm going to be there, but I don't want to go out on a ship linkage. So I suppose that's about it. I'll catch up with you.